Shalom, brothers and sisters, and welcome to part one and a half of the house of Abraham, the whole house. And we're going to go over one law for Yasharal and one law for the stranger, according to the covenant promises made. And why are we doing this video? We are proving that the covenant, that was given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob was for the children, the seed of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and those of his household who are Gentiles or strangers. And we are proving that we have always had Gentiles tied to our household and they've taken part of the covenants that was given to us. And they would take part in the, the new covenant when Hamashiach returned. And in the saying that Abraham would be a blessing to all nations, that there will be true. Because it was true right from the very start. So, brothers and sisters, dismiss any other narrative that you're hearing out there and believe the words that's right there in the book. So we're going to get some more evidence concerning the stranger being included in the house of Yasharal and tied to the house of Yasharal and always been a part and have to follow the same laws, statutes, commandments that we had to follow. But I also wanted to go over this parable in Matthew's chapter 24 before we go to um, Exodus and Leviticus. Before we go there, let's read this here. Matthew's 25 and 14. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country. Who called his own servants? Now, y'all got to remember, the Most High has inherited us. We are his inheritance. Y'all hear what I'm saying? We are his inheritance. And you know what? We're going to go over those scriptures as well. We're going to go over those. Matter of fact, we're going to go over those scriptures first. I'm going to go ahead and cover that first, that we are his inheritance and the other nations are our inheritance. And then we're going to get into the one law for, the, for us and one law for the stranger. Brothers and sisters. Now, it's the most high who took us for his inheritance. And it was the most high who said, I'm giving your brothers to you for an inheritance. He gave them to us. We didn't just say, Father, give me your, give me our other brothers out there for an inheritance. He gave them to us. That was his doing. His will was done. And you have to remember this in this order. We are his servants. They are our servants. You got to remember this while you're reading this here, this parable. And even the parable before it about the wise virgins. You, you got to put this together, brothers and sisters. What happened with Abraham's household happened throughout all the households of Yasharal. For the kingdom of heaven is as a man traveling into a far country who called his own servants and delivered unto them his goods. And unto one he gave five talents. To another one and to another one. I mean. Unto one he gave five talents. To another two. And to another one. To every man according to his several ability. And straightway took his journey. Then he that had received the five talents. Went and traded with the same. And made them with five others. And likewise he that had two. Received two. He also gained other two. But he that had received one and went went and did in the earth and hid his, his master's money 
After a long time, the master of this of those servants cometh and reckoneth with them. And so he that had received five talents came and brought other five talents, saying, Master, thou deliverest unto me five talents. Behold, I have gained besides them five talents more. His master said unto him, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And you're going to see these type of servants in our household. You're going to see them being a good and faithful servant to us. As Eleazar was. And other servants. But then you're going to see the wicked, slothful, hateful, rebellious servant as well. To our households. But. We as well are being faithful servants to the Father, but you are also seeing the wicked, unfaithful servants of the house of Yasharal as well. It's a twofold thing going on here, brothers and sisters. There's still a separation between the 12 tribes and the other Gentiles. We are still the head. We are still the masters. We are still his chosen. That has not changed. But they were given to us. And we were to be stewards over them. And to keep them in the way. And to keep them in right with the covenant. The law, sections, and commandments. They were to follow our lead and everything. That's your job title. Just as Adam had. Adam was king over the earth. And the father looked and said, wait a minute. Let's make him a help me. And the father gave him someone to help him. He gave him the woman. That's her job title. That's her description on the earth. When she fall out of that, she ain't happy. She's in rebellion. She's in whatever else. Same thing with Adam. When he fall out of his headship, he, he's, he's out of whack. He's in rebellion. So we must learn our position and places. He said, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. He also that had received two talents came and said, Master, thou deliverest unto me two talents. Behold, I have gained two other talents besides them. His master said unto him, well done, good and faithful servant. Thou hast been faithful over a few things. I will make thee ruler over many things. Enter thou into the joy of thy master. Abraham was a joy unto those in his household. Everyone was, was just together and as a family. He treated as though they was his children. One born in the land. We're going to read that commandment as well. We were to be a joy. In our own households. With our servants. Following these laws. It's commandments. You, you, you wouldn't have a choice. You'd be filled with the spirit. It'll be, it'd be joy. Joy comes in the morning. Then he, he which had received the one talent came. And said master. I knew thee. That thou art an hard man. Reaping where thou hast not sown. And gathering where thou hast not strawed. And I was afraid. Y'all know what the Moses says about the fearful. And the wicked servant. They'll be weeping and gnashing the teeth. And went and hid thy talent in the earth. He was afraid and went and hid his talent in the earth. Lo, there thou hast that is thine. And then he wanted to. I guess he wanted him to go dig it up for him. <laughs> you know, I don't know if he was pointing over there saying, look, it's dig. Hey, look, it's in that hole over there. <laughs> His master answered and said unto him, thou wicked and slothful servant, thou knewest that I reap where I sowed not and gathereth where I have not strawed. Thou oughtest therefore to have put my money to the exchanges and then at my coming, I should have received mine own with usury. That mean with extra. He should have gave him back. Not only that one talent. But two. 
Take therefore the talent from him, and give it unto him which have ten talents. For unto every one that have shall be given, and he shall have abundance. But from him that have not shall be taken away even that which he have. And cast ye the unprofitable servant into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Learn these parables, brothers and sisters. It will help. Now let's go to Exodus. Sorry, brothers and sisters. I meant Deuteronomy. Because we're going to take a look at. Uh, we are the Most High's inheritance. And we inherit them so deuteronomy chapter 32 and 9 states for yahweh's portion is his people jacob is the lot of his inheritance we are indeed his inheritance and the apple of his eye we are a special people unto himself and because these blessings flow, overflow through us to, uh, to all the nations, that prophecy or that promise that the Most I said is being fulfilled. In Abraham, all the nations shall be blessed. Let's go to um, Isaiah. This is Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 3. <laughs> For thou shalt break forth on the right hand and on the left, and thy seed shall inherit the Gentiles and make the desolate cities to be inhabited. So the Father, the one who gave them to us, why are you wanting to be oppressive in a, you know, and put affliction upon him. When you had that done to you in misery, him, why you want to turn into them? Or even here in the land of your captivities, why would you want to take that into the kingdom? What they did to you and how horrible you had it here. You're going to make it that horrible for, for the other nations that join themselves unto you in righteousness and holiness. You think the most high going to let you in the kingdom like that? And do you think our Gentiles that join themselves unto us are going to be unrighteous and holy in our land? They can't take partake in the covenant. You think they're going to be walking around here? I and your husbands, I and your wives, and, and, and whispering and catcalling them and in our land? You think they're going to have a, an excuse to tell the Most High? Oh, we're not under those covenant. Just the 12 sons are. The Most High covered everything in his brilliance. He covered the Gentiles, whether near or far, whether free or bond, whether in our land or out of the land. He covered all bases. You will not have an excuse to tell him. Oh, um, there such and such of the 12 tribes told me uh, that I can't take part in this covenant. That's only for, for uh, y'all Shirah. And the Father going to tell you, get ye into outer darkness because you believe that one rather than him we all start to obey the father regardless who you're under and what land you're in what nation you are we see examples of all the other nations still obeying him nebuchadnezzar obeyed him cyrus obeyed him helped start to rebuild another temple We are in the image of the Father on the earth. We must represent him. He has chosen us to be his helpmeet. He's the head. We're the, we're the wife. We're the helpmeet. But under Hamashiach now, we is his helpmeet because the Father gave us to him. And we are the stewards of this holy covenant, the guards of it. And we are the light of to the, all the other nations that's our position in place and theirs is is just as great they're, they're our helpers they're going to join themselves unto us and be heads of our households be in our armies help us you know they, they're there for that purpose 
helpmate. And you're going to respect them just as you would a wife. Now, some of them going into hard bondage um, in captivity, just as the scriptures say. And we're going to sell some to the Sabians. But you got these different groups that's coming in with us. It's it's the the free and the bond. And within that bond, you got male and maid servants that's going to be in your house, head in your households. Then you got the other ones coming in in chains and stuff. This is a whole story you got to grasp, brothers and sisters. Be not deceived. So... We have proven that. Let's go further on and prove some more Psalms. Let's go to Psalms. Now, also, I mentioned in my The Messiah series, The Messiah in the Old Testament, you have this dual action going on all over the scriptures with Hamashiach and Zion. Well, what was given to Hamashiach, you see it's the same given to Zion. You see this narrative unfolding over, over and over again. Right here in Psalms chapter 2 and 7 it says, or let's start right here. Well, you know what, let's just start at the top of this. And then we're going to take it down to verse 8. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against Yahweh and against the anointed, saying, Let us break their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. Yahweh shall have them in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vex them in his sore displeasure. Yet have I set my king upon my holy hill on, of Zion. Hamashiach, right? This is Hamashiach. I will, de I will declare the decree. Yahweh have said unto me, Thou art my son. This day have I begotten thee. And we know that we also. Hamashiach is the only begotten son from, a, from above. You see that narrative in here? And we are the, his, his uh, firstborn below. You see that narrative in here. And it's all tied together. Ask of me and I shall give thee the heathen for thine inheritance. And the uttermost parts of the earth for thy possession. Y'all see that? Let's go to Second Esdras. Uh, let's start with Second Esdras chapter 6. And then we're going to go into Second Esdras chapter 7. Now remember... We're just going over the inheritance. We were inherited by the Father. They were inherited by us, by the Father's words himself. Right here it says, And over these, Adam, whom thou ordainest, master over all the works that thou hast made, of him come we all. The people whom thou hast chosen, all this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh, because thou hast said that for our sakes thou madest the world. Now, let's go back up here. The Most High made a distinction between everyone else and us. Though we all come from Adam, but also the people whom thou hast chosen, has come from him. Brothers and sisters, so there is a, still a distinction here between his chosen people and the other nations. But it says, he made the world for our sakes, the righteous sake, the holy sake. As for the other nations which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing and are like unto spittle and thou hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. And you can't take this same verse 
and slap it on the Gentiles that joined themselves to us because the Father didn't. He gave commandments concerning the ones who are with us, who take hold of his holy covenant and want to be righteous and holy. This is not talking about them. He's talking about all the other nations. They are as nothing. And our own people who want to be like them, they are as nothing. Not all who was of Yasharal is Yasharal. Verse 47, And now, O Yahweh, behold, these nations which are reputed as nothing, be masters over us and devour us. But we thy people whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten. You see the dual thing? The son was called the only begotten. We were called his only begotten. Remember when he said Abraham, uh, uh, he, he called Abraham's son Isaac his only son. Even though he, he had um, children, he had Isaac. I mean, uh, Ishmael, but he only pointed out Isaac. <laughs> There's a reason for that. And thy fervent lover are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sake, why do we not possess for an inheritance our world? How long shall this endure? This is Edra's accent. How long shall this endure? Now we drop down to 10. And I said it. And I, and I said, it is so, Master. Then said he unto me, Even so also is Yasharal's portion, because for their sakes I made the world. For their sakes I made the world. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He made the world for the righteous and the chosen. And to back up Ezra in his complaint, where is our inheritance? Our heritage? What's going on? Why are we underneath the hand of these heathens? Where's, where's the, uh, uh, we supposed to be ruling the world? Well, right here, the Most High says, and thou, this is Jeremiah chapter 17 and 4. And thou, even thyself, shalt discontinue from thine heritage that I gave thee. And I will cause thee to serve thine enemies in the land which thou knowest not. For you have kindled a fire in mine anger which shall burn forever. And so the Most High put the curse upon us, took our heritage and our culture. Now they are the master and we are the servant. They became shepherds over us. And of course they abused that. And the most high will repay them when the time comes, brothers and sisters. And to back that up, this is Lamentations 5 and 2. Our inheritances turn to strangers, our houses to aliens. We are orphans and fatherless. Our mothers are as widows. Just backing all that up, brothers and sisters. So let's get into some of these commandments, brothers and sisters, that was given to us that's in the books of the laws concerning the stranger. These are commandments given directly to you. Hear what I'm saying? Deuteronomy chapter 10, verse 18 and 19 says, He doth execute the judgment of the fatherless and widow, and loveth the stranger, in giving him food and raiment. Love you therefore the stranger, for you were strangers in the land of Mizraim, Thou shalt fear Yahweh thy Elohim. Him shalt thou serve, and to him shalt thou cleave and swear by his name. Y'all hear what I'm saying? He gave you a commandment concerning the, concerning the stranger, the fatherless, the widow. You were to look after them. 
those of your land. Stop bringing stiff-necked, circumcise your heart, your mind. Obey these commandments. They will serve you well. This is Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 7 and 8. Thou shalt not abhor an Edomite, for he is thy brother. Thou shalt not abhor an Egyptian, because thou wast a stranger in his land. The children that are begotten of them shall enter into the congregation of Yahweh in the third generation. If you don't want to obey this, that's fine. You can leave this channel. I'm going to obey this commandment here. I'm not going to hear nobody else tell me. Because the most I hate Esau. I got to hate him too. I, I haven't received the commandment from my father to hate Esau. He has not clearly spoken to me and told me in the books. Of all the records I read. Because he hates Esau, you need to hate him too. And if it's not according to this word, I got to toss it out. This is what I'm going to hear what thus said the Most High in the commandments. I'm not going to hate an Edomite or an Egyptian. I'm not going to hate those of the other nations just because someone tell me to. I'm going to obey the commandments under the new covenant, which include these commandments right here. You can obey or not obey. That's your choice. That's between you and the Most High. I'm just telling y'all what I'm going to do. This is a straightforward commandment from the Father to his twelve sons and their children after them brothers and sisters and all who is in our households are joined to us whether near or far let's read this and when a stranger shall live with thee and will keep the passover to yahuwah let all his males be circumcised and then let him come near and keep it. So even he has to circumcise all the males in his household before he can partake in the Passover with us. And he shall be as one that is born in the land. I didn't say it. The Most High did that. This is the stranger with the congregation of Yasharal. All the congregation of Yahshua shall keep it, he says. All of them shall keep it. And when a stranger live with thee, they can partake in the covenant if they circumcise themselves and all the males in their household. And they would be one. They would be as they were born in the land. For no one circumcised person shall eat thereof. One law shall be to him that is homeborn and unto the stranger that liveth among you. Do you hear? This is plain and simple. This doesn't need any interpretation. The covenant is for us and those who partake in the covenant with us, who live amongst us. It's simple. And thus did all the children of Yasharal, as Yahweh commanded Moses and Aaron, so they did. Stop being stiff-necked. These answers are real simple and they're right before your face. Let's go to Leviticus now. And to back that up, in Leviticus 24 and 22 it says, You shall have one manner of law as well for the stranger. So he's talking to Yashara right here. And then he says, as well for the stranger. As for one of your own country, you ought to treat them like they were one born in your own land, right? For I am Yahweh, your Allah, your Allah I am. Obey his commandments 
and believe him. Don't believe everyone a doctrine. And this explains what um, what many other scriptures say, including what's said in Acts chapter 15. Yes, the Gentile must follow the covenants of the, of, of, of the Most High. Y'all know when Peter and Paul and James and them was, they was discussing, hey, what shall we give to the Gentiles? Well, let's just go there real quick. Now, this is Acts chapter 15, where Paul and them is discussing, what shall we tell the Gentiles? And he says, wherefore my sentence says that we trouble not them which from among the Gentiles are turned to Yah. Those who are among the Gentiles will turn to Yah. He's talking about um, the Greek speaking Hebrews in those areas of the northern kingdom and of the scattered Yehudim of the southern kingdom that's in those areas that don't really know their heritage and culture and they're coming back to the natural ways of the Most High. But he's also talking to the other nations that are with them, maybe joined onto their houses. Y'all understand? This is talking about all those groups right here while they're living amongst the other nations in those areas so here's what he says but that we write unto them that they abstain from pollution of idols and from fornication and from things strangled and from blood so they said you know what no need to put all that burden on them Let's give these babies milk. They're, they're not going to be able to remember all that all, all at once. Y'all trying to feed them um, 613 laws. Or, or how many? A thousand laws. You trying to put a thousand laws upon them at once? No, 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 no. Here's our sentence. We're going to give these babies milk. We're going to feed them milk. Give them these four or five things to start off with. Why? For Moses of old time have in every city them that preach him being read in the synagogues every Sabbath day there were synagogues all over the place brothers and sisters in all the lands we were scattered and they're simply saying no no start them off with this milk because in those synagogues where they live at they're, they're preaching Moses in there and they will learn little by little brothers and sisters in those lands this was the discussion and it pleased the apostles and elders and they simply wrote that letter and, and the Gentiles was happy because um, they didn't have to they didn't have to feel the weight and the pressure of those Pharisees trying to put the rock upon them, you know, put the rock on their shoulders. And they how are you going to give a baby a big boulder to hold? You, you can't give a baby a boulder. It's going to crush him, smash him. You have to let that baby grow up, become a man. And he's able to handle that boulder, depending on what size boulder it is, y'all. <laughs> Work with me on this example. Work with me. <laughs> the same as an infant. You don't feed that baby a steak dinner. The baby ain't got teeth yet. Can't chew for one. The digestive system ain't, ain't ready for that type of food yet. You give the baby milk. This was a discussion on how we should deal with these babies. Go, go start reading from chapter 15 and read the whole thing. And you're going to understand the whole conversation with that in mind we're going to deal with these babies of uh, the Yehudim we're going to deal with these babies of the northern kingdom and we're going to deal with the babies who want to join, on, join themselves onto us 
And from now on, when you read Acts and all the letters of Paul, you, you have even greater understanding of what's happening and who he talking to. Because all you got to do is look at Abraham's household and what the father allowed in that household. It's going to be allowed all the way through. He changes not. Men change. They one line you with um, words of destruction. And you don't believe them. Believe what's written right here. So now we know that these Gentiles, no matter who it was, I don't care who they was of the other nations, living amongst the other nations. I don't care who they was. They are underneath the covenant of promises. They have to obey the commandments. And we must give them milk at first. Little small things to start off with. And then over time they will be taught the ways of Moses. Like Hamashiach said. If you believe not Moses, you will not believe me. For he wrote of me. Y'all hear what I'm saying? So yes, the Gentiles were also put underneath the covenants of promise. But we were the head of that which was given to us. We were given the oracles of the Most High. He has not dealt so with any other nation. But he doesn't leave out anyone who comes out of those other nations and join themselves to him in the bond of the covenant. They are also our brothers and sisters joined on to us in whatever capacity they come in. They may come in free as converts and proselytes. They may come in as servants in our houses, in our businesses, in, the, in our armies. They may come in in chains, come into the land and, 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 and work our lands and, and hew wood and draw water, whatever the case may be. Whichever way they come in, they must be put underneath the covenants as well. Or they're going to have the excuse that they they need to make it into the kingdom. And the Most High it ain't like that. They must be underneath the covenant. That's why Paul says, those who without the law shall perish without the law. And those who have the law shall be judged by the law. Y'all hear what Paul's saying right there now? He's not putting away the law, such commandments. He's telling you those without the law is going to perish. So the father, knowing that he was going to have some good and faithful servants in your household, put them underneath the law as well. And they must follow it. Let's go get some more evidence. So the Most High is making sure you understand Zion. You 12 tribes. That the stranger that's in your gate partake in the law of such commandments right along with you. And anyone who convert that's near or far can also partake in the covenants. This is Deuteronomy chapter 29 starting with verse uh, 9. <coughs> Keep therefore the words of this covenant and do them that you may prosper in all that you do. You stand this day, all of you, before Yahweh, your Elohim, your captains. This is all who were standing before him. All of them. Your captains of your tribes, your elders, and your officers with all the men of Yasharal, your little ones, your wives, and thy stranger that is in thy camp from the hero of thy wood unto the draw of the water that thou shouldest enter into covenant with Yahweh thy Elohim and into his oath which Yahweh thy Elohim maketh with thee this day y'all see that that he may establish thee today for a people unto himself and that he may be unto thee, uh, Elohim, as he has said unto thee, and as he has sworn unto thy fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Neither with you only do I make this covenant and this oath, but with him that standeth here with us this day, 
before Yahweh or Elohim. Do you hear what he's saying here? Not only with you, Jacob, but him who's standing with you here this day, before Yahweh or Elohim, and also with him that is not here with us this day. Y'all hear what I'm saying? It's real easy. You will never be deceived, brothers and sisters. If you go learn these laws, such commandments, study the house of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Learn the full narrative that the Father created. And you won't be deceived anymore and falling for all these things that's going on. Let's go to Deuteronomy again. Okay, I'm in Deuteronomy. <laughs> okay, I made a mistake. Okay, let's go to Deuteronomy 26. Just need to scroll up. <laughs> 26, 11 through 12. And thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which Yahweh thy Elohim have given unto thee. Now, did not the Most High gave, give you an inheritance of the other nations, your brethren, and he commanded you to, to love him and to treat him like one born in the land. Did, now he's telling you, rejoice over the good things that he given you. Are you not supposed to do what he just told you? I'm rejoicing over the good things he's given me. I know what's coming for me. I'm going to rejoice over all that is he's given me. And unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. He never left them out. He starts with the head of that household, which is you. Well, he made you the head of that household down here. He's the head totally, you know, and all, over all. But you're over the Gentiles the Gentile nations, and thou shalt rejoice in every good thing which Yahweh thy Elohim have given thee unto thee, and unto thine house, thou and the Levite and the stranger that is among you. Rejoice with us, stranger. Rejoice. But you partaking in the covenants of promise with us, being, being blessed, by the promises given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When thou hast made an end of tithing, all the tithes of thine increased the third year, which is the year of tithing, and has given it unto the Levite, the stranger, the fatherless, and the widow, that they may eat within thy gates and be filled. Then thou shalt say before Yahweh thy Elohim, I have brought away the hollow things out of mine house, the set apart things that's in your house, and also have given them unto the Levite and unto the stranger, to the fatherless and to the widow, according to all thy commandments which thou hast commanded me. I have not transgressed thy commandments, neither have I forgotten them. See that? He's covering the stranger that's within our gate the fatherless, the widow, and the Levite. We are to give unto them. Brothers and sisters, let's go on to uh, Exodus. Now we're going directly to the Ten Commandments. Let's read it. This is Exodus chapter 20, verse 8. Well, at least we're going to one of the commandments. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seven day is the Sabbath of Yahweh thy Elohim. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy maidservant, thy manservant, 
nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within the, thy gates. Now remember I told you those different type of Gentiles within our walls. You have the freeborn that's with us. The proselyte, the convert. You also have the man servant and the maid servant. And then, of course, you also got the the one that's really, you know, that we may have conquered and brought them here, you know, took them captives. Nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, the sea and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore Yahweh blessed the Sabbath day, Sabbath day, and hallowed it. And again down here, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not cover thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant. Don't desire your neighbor's servants. Or anything that is thy neighbor's. You are seeing the opening up of a system. It, it, it covers all bases. It covers us. It covers them. That no one may make an excuse before his throne. This is Deuteronomy 5. And 14, which talks about keeping the Sabbath day. Your manservant, your maidservant, nor your stranger shall do any work on that day. Why? So that it may they may rest. That they may rest as well as thou. This is a commandment given to you. 12 tribes telling you you need to give them a day off that they may rest every one of your household need to rest on this day the most high covered all the bases brothers and sisters you or them won't have an excuse on a day of judgment Again, brothers and sisters, we are proving that one law is for Zion and one law for the stranger, who is our inheritance. This is Leviticus 19 and 33. And if a stranger sojourn with thee in your land, you shall not vex him. But the stranger that dwelleth with you shall be unto you as one born among you. And thou shalt love him as thyself, for you were strangers in the land of Mizraim. I am Yahweh, your Hello, I am. Let's drop down to Leviticus 25 and 46. 25 and 46. Uh, let me see. Do I want to start with 25, 45? Let's do 45 through 47. Moreover, the children of the strangers that do live among you of them shall you buy. This is a commandment to you, twelve tribes. You are to buy from the strangers that live among us, who already know the ways of the Most High, raised up in the ways of the Most High. You are to buy from them, the children, their children. Buy their children, not from some sick heathen Gentile outside of our land that don't know nothing about our mighty one. And bring them in the house. They can be doing who knows what. And of their families that are with you. With you. That are with you. They've always been with us. Amongst us. Which they begat in your land. And they shall be your possession. And you shall take them as an inheritance. For your children after you. This is a commandment. Whether you like it or not. The father decreed it. None of his words will come back void. You're going to take them as an inheritance. 
or lake of fire. To inherit them for a possession, they shall be your bondmen forever. But over your brethren, the children of Yashara, your your seed, your your actual blood brothers and sisters, you shall not rule one over another with rigor. And if a sojourner or stranger wax rich, now this is dealing with that free one, that convert. This is mostly the bond one, the male man servant and the male servant. Remember I was talking about free and bond? And if a sojourner and stranger wax rich by thee, and thy brother that dwelleth by him wax poor, and sell himself unto the stranger, or sojourner by thee, or to the stock of the stranger's family, after that he is sold, he may be redeemed again. One of his brother may redeem him, or one of his kinfolk. But, um, when we buy them, it's permanent. They ours forever. Now, he even covers hired servants, the ones we would hire. The Most High covered everything. We are his servants. They are ours. All in holiness and righteousness. Brothers and sisters. And let's get some more understanding. This is Job chapter 2 verse 28 and 29. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days will I pour out my spirit. Now you know not only us he's going to pour out our spirit, Zion, twelve tribes, but also those joined unto us of our households. Just as he empowered Abraham's household, the males in those households. To um, go with Abraham to defeat the enemies. To take back Lot. Just as he empowered Isaac's household and Jacob's household. And anyone who served with us. And we're going to bear more witness to this. Brothers and sisters. With the with um, part two. Which is going to deal with Isaac's household. And we're going to cover some of the uh, free and bond stuff as well. Just a little bit. We're going to touch on that in part two. But now that you know and understand, you can go to Jeremiah chapter 31, 31 and Hebrews 8, 8 through 12 and understand who he's talking about, who he's talking to. He's already explained it over and over to you who he's talking about, who he's talking to, who's going to be taking part of the covenant given to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It's plain, it's simple, don't need no interpretation, it's there. So let's go to part two the house of Isaac. Shalom.